If you're looking to grow your electrical contracting business, in this video, I'm going to show you real strategies that we've implemented in other electrical contractors to grow their business, to increase their sales, keep their schedules full. I don't know this company, but I'm going to walk you through the sales and marketing strategies that I would implement for their business. I actually used to be the director of business development at a $3 million home service business that we scaled to $5 million and then ultimately sold to private equity. I also just went through this process with another electrical contractor where we came on, we were working with them. They're around 2 million. They scaled up to 4 million and sold again to private equity. And these are the strategies that we did in their business to help them grow. So let's get right into this. All right. So the first thing that I always recommend for any business, and if you're electrical contractor business specifically, go to Google, type in electrician in the target service area. So this company is located in New Rochelle, New York. I would do this exact search for your area. And there's four core areas that you want to show up in. The first one is what's called Google local service ads. These are pay per lead ads. And if you notice this company here, they currently have 26 Google reviews and the number one spot has 49 Google reviews. So if you turn on Google local service ads, it's pay per lead, a lead in their area for uh, electrical lead. And this is zip code is 18 to $27. So you could turn this on and literally be the number one spot in your area for Google local service ads if you have enough Google reviews. So the mission for them would be get a bunch of reviews, get you have 26, get over 49, so get to 50 reviews, get over 4.8 stars, and you're going to show up here. Um, that's one of the big factors that they have for showing people. So that's the first thing. Google local service ads, set those up, low-hanging fruit, get 20 reviews, Get your employees to leave your reviews, contractors to leave your reviews, vendors to leave your reviews, customers to leave your reviews, friends and family that would refer you to leave your reviews. There's no way you can't get 20 people to leave your review. All right, next is your Google search ads, which we're not going to spend too much time on this because it could be a deep dive all just for uh, electrical ads for, uh, excuse me, Google ads for electrical contractors. But these are pay per click ads, and this is a whole rabbit hole that you could go down. We're not going to talk about those. This right here is your Google business profile. Now, if you see this company, they are showing number one for the local map pack. And there's not much competition here. 21 reviews, 21 reviews, 26. Um, they have the, the most reviews for companies in New Rochelle. One of the big things, things that I want to point out is that th these two companies, they're not even showing up here because probably they're not located in New Rochelle, but they're running Google local service ads in New Rochelle. And then the last thing here is your on-site SEO. Your on-site SEO is how your website ranks, which we're going to go into that as well. So from a Google business profile perspective, if you are not showing up here for your business, the main things that you want to look at is number of reviews. If you only have 26 and these other companies have 100, you're not going to be shown. You need to get enough Google reviews. Also, if you notice here, this company is, is labeled a contractor as their main category. You want to be an electrician. This should be your main con your main category. If you are if if they don't have anyone else to show, they're going to show you here. Also, they have electrical in their name, so they're going to show them here. But um, those are some of the reasons why you might not be showing up in your map pack specifically. Let's look at their on-site SEO for website. Now, their website, in my opinion, um, it's it's decent, but it's not anywhere near where it needs to be. Um, we're going to, for, for this video, we're going to look at some SEO, search engine optimization, and also conversion tools. So the first thing is if we go to their website and we look at the three things that you want to look for for SEO, you want to look at your title tag, your meta description, and your H1, which they don't have an H1 designated. And we're going to go to a service page just because it's even easier to look at here. And I'm going to show you some real examples of what it should look like. So for residential electrician, the title tag here should say residential electri electrician, New Rochelle, New York. Meta description, if you're looking for a great electrician in New Rochelle, choose JBG Electric Corp. H1, this should say residential electric, New Rochelle. So you should have your title tag, meta description, H1 should all have your main service and also your main target area. That is correct SEO. So let's look at an example. This is just on the fly. I haven't looked at any of these companies, but let's just pick this one here. A perfect Goldman electrical contracting company. This is the number one ranking website. So if we go here, let's just see. Okay, in their title, they have electrical contracting company, Westchester, New York. They have a, the meta description, Westchester, New York, and the H1, they don't even have one designated. Let's just pick a service. And yeah, they don't even have service pages built out. So this is a perfect example of if they were to clean up their web, their uh, SEO on their website, they could definitely easily outrank this company because they're not even doing anything right. They just have a couple uh, geo targets. Um, 
Let's just pick one other one and just see if this is correct. If not, I'll show you an example of one that's correct. Ugh, like this is a terrible website. They even have the title tag, New Rochelle, in the meta description. They have Westchester County and the H1, they don't even have it right. So um, I think you get the point at this point. So that's some of the low hanging fruit. As far as conversions go, I noticed this and it's very strange to me. Um, the goal of most websites is to convert leads. So they have the click to call, which is good. They have a chat widget over here. They have this click to call, but over here under links, they have request a service. So my recommendation would be pick whatever you want. Do you want people to contact you? Do you want them to re request service and stick that over here and make this like an orange color or this yellow color and have that really stand out. The other thing is on mobile, um, they have the chat, which is good. They probably have the click to call. So like this looks, and they have the two things. I would have this off your mobile and on your main. Oh, they have it right here. Okay, good. Request the service. So same thing, I'll put the request the service button up here. Overall, it looks a little outdated or, or janky, I would even say, but, uh, but um, I would say that Overall, like if they just clean some of this stuff up, they could get to the point where it's good at converting leads and it's also uh, d really good for SEO to get traffic to their website. All right, so some of the other things from electrical contractor perspective, we talked about creating visibility. So SEO, running ads, uh, B2B relationships. So you could work with builders or contractors, remodelers to refer business into you, plumbers. All these people could refer business back and forth. The other thing is conversion. So um, on their website, converting leads through their funnel here. Uh, let me show you one other example of this company. So this is a company that we help grow their business. You can see their call to actions. They have the pop up here. They have a get an estimate, which is an estimate calculator. They have request service buttons. Overall, as you look at this, it looks much cleaner and easier to navigate than when you go to a site like this. It just looks like spread out with this weird bar here and, and a little all over the place. The other thing is when you go here and I'll show you um, how this looks, see how these are sticky headers here. This is something that's important. You want to keep these sticky so that way as people are scrolling, they don't have to search to try to turn into a lead. So that's really important. And it's just clean. Where this one, it, it's not that it wasn't effective probably, but it's just not as clean as what we just looked at as you saw. So uh, that's some of the conversion tactics. Now for electrical contractors, this is huge because um, you, could, you could go in and just replace a simple outlet and then they need a ceiling fan replaced and then they need a generator and they need a heavy up. You know, there's a bunch of different layers of things that you can offer. So a lot of times what happens is people go through this funnel and they all sit here in this big blue ocean and there's never any retargeting. So putting together a monthly newsletter that goes out every single month that highlights different services that sh they should be focusing on, like replacing their um, fire detectors or smoke detectors, um, generator season's coming because a, a hurricane season's coming. Uh, you name it, you know, whatever those services are during the different time frames, EV chargers, you get the point. Have a monthly newsletter that's cross-selling services, staying top of mind. Maybe even you do a text campaign, like, hey, we're going to be in your neighborhood. We did this actually for an uh, electrical contractor in North Carolina, and it crushed for them. We said like, hey, we're going to be in your neighborhood next week. Um, since we're in your neighborhood, we have a, a voucher for $20 off. Let me know if you want us to stop by and take care of any projects for you. And we sent it out to their database and it went crazy. Like people were hitting them up left and right to try to secure that voucher. And they loaded up their schedule for the next week. So there's a lot of cool retargeting strategies that you can do. But the most important thing is to start with something, whether that's a simple email or even just call a couple people every day, just checking in like, hey, we did the ceiling fan a couple months ago. Just wanted to check in and see how it's holding up and try to get them, bring them back into the funnel with something. Um, cool. So I hope this was helpful. If you, you know, you're looking to do marketing, you don't really know where to go. We help companies like this. We do free marketing audits. We can go over your entire business, uh, meet with you for 30 minutes, give you a roadmap. Whether we work together or not, it's completely free, which is great. Um, if not, it's all good. Hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.